Hi everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by my video on this beautiful Sunday early afternoon. I'd like to go ahead and share with you um, how I add gold metallic watercolor uh, to my pieces here. I, as you can see, I got a bit of a head start. Wasn't too sure if I was going to have the courage to share, but so many of you have been so kind uh, to compliment me on my use of gold metallic watercolor on my work that I thought I would share with you just some pieces here. As you can see, I do love the detail even on the beard and even on his little schnoz and the leaves and even some rings there, some circles on his hat. So this one I'm doing a little different. I added a bit of a shimmer to the top of the mushroom to right here, the middle of the mushroom there as well. And I decided to add a bit more right there. Excuse my inky watercolory fingers. Uh, the metallic watercolor I'm using is number 902 from the Kuritake uh, Starry Night palette. It's their Gonsai Tambi watercolors. I don't think they sell anything else. Not that I know of as far as watercolors, but I could be wrong. And this is the consistency that I have it in. I do spray it down and leave it alone for about a good three to four minutes before I even stir it or activate it to get this really beautiful, almost um, just like a saucy type of blend and mixing it with a secondary brush really helps to bring in that shimmer and sheen. Um, so I'm not looking for sparkle, you know, this is not that type of watercolor. I do have handmade uh, color shifting sparkle watercolor, uh, but this is, this is different. And as you saw in my previous piece, I do love to add a little bit of gold directly on it to the main subject. And in this case, it would be my sweet Nomi here. So just very lightly coming in with a barely a damp brush. Just going around and around. And having your work upside down, at least having my work upside down helps to keep the color contained in one area so it doesn't go anywhere because to me with my experience my own personal experience this can adding too much gold you know too quickly can get out of hand for me I could just add it to everything <laughs> if you let me um, so I'm thinking we can add some to stripes here and then with the second brush, just gently coax some of that color out, just a little bit. It's pretty. Just slight details here and there really do make a difference. And I made so many mistakes in this piece, and I feel like adding this bit of gold certainly does help makes me feel better about it makes me feel much more braver in sharing I love the way his walking stick came out though it's really pretty I'm going to go ahead and add fixing the autofocus there. I'm going to go ahead and add my gosh I love these brushes from Hobby Lobby they have a shorter handle and really get in some nice fine lines I have naturally shaky lines so um, I can get probably even finer with this uh, 
3 over 0 if I really wanted to, but hands are a little shaky. All right? Oh, and I knew I wanted to add down here. There we go. Just following the pencil line. And I'm also going to gently, oops, so sorry. It's been a while since I've made a video, a real time video. You might hear a little bit of noise in the background. Again, I got the window open, but my son is also playing with his toys. So you might hear a little bit of that. Okay, I do love the way this is coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and be really brave. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of I'm not brave enough to do it in the middle. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I worked so hard on his beard. And I didn't add any line work to it either, so I'm not even going to attempt it. He just has a smooth beard. Maybe he just came from the barber shop, and I ain't trying to mess with it. I think this gold is the reddish gold from that set. It comes with uh, five or six of those larger pans. And this is the, the most deepest intense red, reddish gold from the set. I think it's more like a reddish gold. Okay, so let's scoop that back in there. Isn't that just lovely? See, now I'm feeling a little bit more better about my work, and I might even have the courage to, to share this on, on the gram. <laughs> you know, we can add a little bit more on the other side. Why not, right? How about right here? Yeah. Made a couple of mistakes right here, so we can go ahead and you don't have to cover it up, but could certainly spruce it up there. Oh, how pretty. That nice sheen. I've uh, been complimented on this technique. I don't think I've ever shown how, how I do it, but I've been complimented on the finished product, you know, on adding the gold. So... Thank you to those of you who do tune in to see. Oh, this is just coming out so nice. Every time I pull the brush away, I'm just simply literally wiping it just like that. It takes a while to achieve this technique, and I'm certainly not an expert, but you know who I learned this technique from? Just in shading like this period was from Emily Artful. Gosh, it's been a long time since I've heard from her in a video. I doubt she'll ever see this video, but if she ever does, I definitely miss her. All right, I'm thinking maybe, and this can get like I said, we can go overboard really quickly with this, um, but as a whole, you know, you can see just how lovely it is. Very nice. I'm thinking maybe we can do just a few, just a little bit more right there on the highlight here of... Now this I have to be careful because I haven't even wet the brush. I'm just using from whatever dampness is in there. Because this color that I used from White Nights, it's called Claret. It's number 325. It's what you see here. 
my gosh, this color just gave me, <laughs> oh, it was a headache to work with. It's beautiful, as you can see. Got a lot of depth and dimension with it, a lot of movement here, um, I think. But my gosh, every time I barely touched it with a damp brush, it just wanted to go all over the place. So I'm trying to avoid that. Now that is looking very nice. I got a little opportunity here to. <laughs> oh my. Again, I still have not wet my brush. I'm just using it from. Now that right there is one special looking gnome and I feel so much so much more better about my work. I really do you guys. Wow. Okay, so let's go ahead and add just a gentle stripe. Of gold and just quickly a few wispy brush strokes telling you this gold is just <laughs> absolutely stunning and with this green that I've chosen to work with this gorgeous sea green mixture I'm basically going down the middle and just gently swiping up really gently like wisping very wispy movements. Okay, and we're going to come right here. I am going to dip my brush into a little bit of water, just a little bit, just enough to give that pointy tip a little edge. So just gently. I'm using the Artegria number 10. So you can see it's seen better days. But it's still my go-to brush. That along with the number 12. These two brushes are like my sidekicks, as you can see. <laughs> They're just all sorts of worn and torn. And I'm okay because that means I'm using them. And then this one here, I mean, come on. Seriously. It's so battered and tattered. So just and you know now that I'm looking at this because this is what happens when you uh, begin to add the details I just realized that I did not darken some of this so I'm going to go in here with this beautiful dark sepia tone that I used for the walking stick. Just a few nooks and crannies here that I'm going to darken up and I guess you guys can can watch. And I'm thinking I will use that number 10. And if a little bit of gold gets on here, then so be it. This is just darkening up some of the, some of these uh, areas here. Uh, yeah, I think flipping this upside down. By the way, this is the masking tape I use. It's from the Dollar Tree. Very, very useful. Sometimes I do get a little bit of, uh, you know, peep through of paint, but nothing that I haven't been able to, you know, to get all bent out of shape over. So just a little bit of detail here, guys. This color is absolutely stunning. It's called chocolate, 
and it is from Mrs. Hand Painted. I'm actually going to come down here. And darken that up right there. And I'm thinking maybe we can just... This color is a little hard to move. Um, when I lay it on thick, you know, wet on to dry. But I just want some of these details to, to come through. So I have to try to move fairly quickly. And I'm not really... I'm not really known for being fast. I'm a very slow painter. But I realized that this detail uh, video turned into something a bit more. Certainly didn't mean for it to happen. But that's what happens. This style of coloring with lots of contrast between the blending, the darks, the lights. This is my prefer, preferred way of of watercoloring, even my preferred way of painting, period, you know. And uh, if you're interested in learning and seeing how it's done, do let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to, to share with you. Um, I'm going to actually quickly ground this stick here. And by grounding, I mean at least make it look like it has some type of shadow, <laughs> just like I did to everything else. So. I did record myself painting this, uh, but there was lots of interruptions and even a fresh, <laughs> some fresh words from me when I ended up messing up severely in some areas here. I know you probably can't tell, but I made a lot of mistakes in this. And um, well, if you're interested in seeing uh, the video, the time lapse format video, do let me know. I'd be more than happy to share it with you. Wow, this looks great. All right, so one more thing. I don't know if you can notice right here, but that is a smile. And uh, I'm thinking I'm going to go for it. So I used the Payne's Gray number 812 from White Knights. about that <laughs> wonderful absolutely wonderful wow this is great let's do a quick uh, peel reveal actually let me go ahead and heat set this it's quite loud so I will spare you I'll be right back you know what I forgot to do is Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Dios me lo bendiga, Dios me lo bendiga. Sorry guys, that was my son sneezing. Back to back, back to back, back to back. All right, so um, what I forgot to do is add some splatter. I'm a big splatter person. Love, love, love it. So I'm going to fill my brush up, my number four brush. From, again Princeton and because I'm using such a rich opaque gold watercolor the droplets are just really just really nice so I'm gonna go ahead and Because I did not um, do any, you know, covering up with the liquid masking or whatever it's called, frisket masking fluid um, on the mushroom, I feel that these little droplets will help with that. So how fun. How fun 
is this. I'm a big fan of odd numbers. We got four, five, and yep, yeah, we're going to add some more over here because I was not expecting to, to do this in this video. But why not? One, two, three. Look at that. Isn't that special? Well, I do think it is. And some extra. See how perfectly round these uh, droplets are? I mean, they are even perfect on the beard. I'm going to put some on his robe. Some on leaves even a little bit on the walking stick wow how lovely all right so these are really really rich and opaque so i have to be really careful with the peel reveal here like i said i wasn't really um thinking of sharing all this with you guys but my gosh it just happened and why not really quick off topic has anyone seen the stranger things finale season four let me know if you have and let me know what you think if you have because i'm over here emotionally wasted <laughs> let's just let's just put it that way Just making these just a little bit more. Isn't this fun? I can just keep on going. It, this is dangerous. The whole splatter thing is very dangerous, even more so when it's the white splatter. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly heat set this, and then I can finally do the peel reveal. All right, I got a bit of a head start because, as you can see, I'm using one of my son's books um, for the backing of this. I actually did the work on this larger, like huge, huge uh, board here. But for this video, I just taped it up onto this part right here because it wasn't, you know, it's not that big, but look at how nice. Isn't this lovely? Not exactly the most ASMR thing you've ever seen, but what a lovely, lovely border. Nice and clean, huh? It takes a bit for these gold droplets to dry because they're quite thick, you know, opaque. And I don't harm my son's book in any way if I do end up having a little bit of paint I make sure to clean it up but this is the finished result and this is why I love using these smaller pieces of arches watercolor paper I cut down a sheet of 9 by 12 to two sheets of 6 by 9 and I get two wonderful pieces of artwork here, a portrait size and a landscape size piece of gnome artwork. I'm really, really happy. And while I made a lot of mistakes in both of these pieces, adding a bit of gold detail and sprucing it up with some gold splatter really made the difference. He is one happy fella. <laughs> I'm really happy with the way these two came out. So if you're still watching, thank you. I'll see you guys soon. And if you want to have uh, complete paint with me sessions with sketches included, there will be longer videos, but do let me know. It would be nice to share. 
Alright guys, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.